The Roman Republic, a seminal chapter in the annals of history, emerged in 509 BCE, marking the end of Etruscan rule over Rome. In its nascent form, the Roman government adopted the mantle of a representative democracy, characterized by a republican structure. During its inception, power was firmly entrenched within the patrician class, comprising the wealthiest families who exclusively held political and religious offices. The rest of the populace, categorized as plebeians, were barred from participating in governance. However, the plebeians embarked on a protracted struggle over nearly two centuries to wrest power from the patricians. At the epicenter of the Roman Republic stood the Senate, a body entrusted with advising on matters concerning the governance of the city and its citizens. Although the Senate did not have formal legislative authority, its distinguished members wielded substantial influence over the legislative processes of Rome. The Senate, as the sole governing body, held sway over the Republic until 494 BCE, when a plebeian-led strike led to the establishment of the Concilium Plebis, or the Council of the Plebs. This pivotal development granted the plebeians a voice in the government and ushered in the formation of new legislative bodies called assemblies, each sharing distinct powers and responsibilities. The Comitia Centuriata played a pivotal role in deciding matters related to war, enacting laws, electing magistrates, hearing appeals for capital convictions, and conducting foreign relations. The Concilium Plebis, on the other hand, had the authority to elect its officials and formulate decrees binding upon the plebeian class, with its influence eventually extending to the entire Roman community by 287 BCE. Lastly, the Comitia Tributa, open to all free adult males, oversaw the election of minor officials, endorsed legislative decisions, and held limited judicial powers, primarily imposing fines rather than administering punishments. Leading the Republic were two consuls, elected by the legislative assemblies, serving one-year terms as presiders over the Roman Senate and commanders of the military. Despite some constraints imposed by the establishment of other magisterial positions, the consuls effectively functioned as the heads of state. The Roman Republic, for centuries, maintained its fortitude. However, the sprawling power and territory of Rome sowed the seeds of internal strife. The first century BCE bore witness to the unmasking of a plot by Roman Senator Lucius Catiline to overthrow the government, unveiled by the eminent orator Marcus Cicero. Figures like the Gracchus brothers sought to institute government and social reforms to alleviate the plight of the poor. Yet, the tussle for supremacy among citizens and factions loyal to either patricians, plebeians, or specific military generals gave rise to hostilities and a series of civil wars, thereby destabilizing the Republic. In the crucible of these conflicts, Julius Caesar, a formidable general and statesman, ascended to prominence. Commanding the allegiance of his army and amassing wealth after conquering Gaul, Caesar's refusal to heed the Senate's demand to relinquish his military command and return as a civilian ignited a civil war against his political rival, Pompey. Emerging victorious, Caesar assumed the mantle of dictator for life, a stark departure from the title's traditional usage in times of military emergencies. Fearing his potential tyranny, a group of senators conspired and assassinated Caesar. In the aftermath, his nephew and heir, Augustus, defeated the conspirators and established himself as the inaugural Roman Emperor. The transition from the Roman Republic to the Roman Empire marked a seismic shift in power dynamics. Under Augustus, emperors gained unprecedented authority, including the ability to introduce and veto laws, command the military, and control the appointment of lower-level officials. This transformation relegated the popular assemblies, once pivotal during the Republican era, to a ceremonial role, while the Senate persisted. The Senate's survival was underpinned by its function as a legitimizing force for an emperor's rule. The Senate conferred authority upon the emperor, comprising Rome's elite and intellectual citizens, and influenced public opinion. It held the power to declare an emperor an enemy of the state 
and posthumously erase an emperor's reign from official records upon removal or death. During Augustus' reign, the Roman Empire consolidated control over the Italian peninsula, established North African colonies following victory over Carthage in the Punic Wars, and extended its dominion into Spain and Gaul. Subsequent emperors expanded Roman territory further, encompassing much of Europe, including Britain and significant portions of Eastern Europe. While expansion bolstered Rome's wealth and prestige, it also sowed the seeds of its eventual decline. The cost of governing such a vast empire, coupled with incessant raids by foreign tribes and communities, strained Rome's treasury and political infrastructure. Emperors attempted internal reforms to mitigate these challenges, with Diocletian splitting the empire into western and eastern halves, each overseen by distinct administrations. However, internal conflicts, external pressures, and economic strains rendered the empire vulnerable to collapse. In the year 476 CE, the Western Roman Empire saw the dethronement of its final emperor, Romulus Augustulus. Nonetheless, the Eastern Roman Empire, known as the Byzantine Empire, endured for another millennium until succumbing to the Ottoman Turks in 1453 CE 